by way of introduction, I'm going to welcome you to Physicians Regional Hospital here in Naples, Florida. My name is Robert Zare. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I've been here in Naples now for 12 years. I was part of the Cleveland Clinic when I first came down here. The last three years I've been in private practice and I primarily focus on dealing with hip and knee replacements. We know that 50% of all adults are going to be afflicted by arthritis, but if you're overweight, you're going to have a much higher incidence of arthritic problems, particularly as it applies to your knees, which is far more of a problem than even hips. We know that overweight women will develop arthritis 70% of the time, and men will only develop it about 35% of the time, and that's reasonably recent data that came out. This telling statement came out of Duke University a year or two back, and it essentially states that women may live longer than men, but they certainly don't necessarily live better. Females are at greater risk of disability as it relates to obesity and arthritis problems. So these are all things that as I present this data, don't start feeling guilty because I'm just as bad as everybody. So, so the question comes up is, uh, am I overweight? God, it can't be me. I, I was an athlete. I was a big star quarterback. I can't possibly be a problem. Well, let me explain something that we use to sort this out. It's called body mass index, euphemistically called the BMI, which is a ratio of your height to your weight. You're considered overweight if that BMI number falls between 25 and 29, and you're considered obese if that BMI hits over 30. BMI of 30 is equivalent to about 30 pounds overweight. So if you're feeling overweight and we do your numbers and you're 30, yep, you're overweight. That's overweight, in case you were wondering. There are all kinds of little graphs out there we all can find very easily to sort out. Six feet four, if I'm over 210 pounds, which I am, then I'm out of the healthy range and I'm creeping over here into the bad range. And if you're five feet six and you're over about 155, 160, you're creeping into the better start to the gym range a little bit more regularly. If this is you, you don't need a graph. You don't need a chart, you're just too big. Okay, so there's always bad news and good news with any scenario here. Now the bad news is for every 10 pounds you go overweight, you're loading about 50 extra pounds of force across your knee. So 10 pounds equivalent to 50 extra pounds of load. That's a couple bags of dog food that you're carrying up and down the stairs. So overweight women increase four times their risk of developing osteoarthritis and men five times the risk for every 10 pounds you go up. The good news is just the converse. 10 pound weight loss, you don't have to lose 100 pounds. Somebody goes in and says, wow, you need to lose 30 pounds. Well, maybe not, maybe not. Each 10 pounds drops that 50 pound load across your knee and what that means is this. I have people that come down here from up north and they'll say, wow, my knees are killing me. They'll have x-rays that look like bone on bone. And you wonder, well now why did their knee just start hurting them a couple of weeks, couple of months ago? And the answer often is they move down here, they can't get to the gym, they put on 10 or 15 pounds. Not a lot, but that's five times 10 or 15 pounds going across their knee. Their x-rays haven't changed in six months or even six years necessarily, but now their knee hurts. So the idea is that you came down, you put on 10 or 15 pounds, your knee started hurting, your x-ray didn't change, nothing else changed except that you added a little extra weight. The doctor looks at the x-ray, as this nice lady pointed out, and said, wow, you're bone on bone. You need your knee replaced pronto or else. Well, that's silly. You've been bone to bone for a long time, years most likely. So the premise that I'm proposing to you is that go back and lose that 10 or 15 pounds. There's absolutely no reason you should not expect that you'll be back to where you were before you came in to see me. And I tell people to do that. Just go back, hit the gym, swim around your pool, do something, get that 10 or 15 pounds off. That same knee is going to be the same knee it was when you came down. You don't have to go run off and get your knee replaced. Just do a little gym time, get the weight back down, and you should expect that your knee will feel the same. Does that all make sense? Okay, so don't be talked into getting surgery just because the x-ray says something. X-rays don't say anything. They're a picture. They tell us what's going on. So please don't underestimate the value of a small amount of weight loss. You don't have to be told, boy, I want to be back where I was in high school. That's never going to happen, folks. It just doesn't happen very often. So we're looking to try to get some realistic goals for you, and that's a realistic goal. 
So just as mom told you to do, go eat a healthy diet, drop a little weight. Braces sometimes help knees. Nobody quite knows why, but often people will say, I put on a knee brace, I play golf, my knee feels great. Walking aids. Now I want to kind of help you with the walking aids concept. Here's a guy with a cane. People hate canes. It makes me look old. I hear that all the time. Uh, I don't want to use a cane. It makes me feel old. But on the other hand, if you can walk more comfortably and that keeps you out of the operating room, I guess looking old to me wouldn't bother me that much if my knee really started hurting that much. These are very helpful, particularly if you have bad balance. And who has bad balance? There's something called neuropathy, whether it be idiopathic, diabetic, or whatever. It means you got numb feet. People with numb feet walk like this. They don't walk like this. They shuffle. They don't want their feet to leave the floor for fear that they will fall down. So they use these little walker things as something to keep their balance. Very safe. You do not want to fall and break your hip. The mortality rate of breaking your hip is high, so please do not fall and break your hip because of vanity. If you need a little cane, get one. Now, I don't like these little guys here. These little scooter carts that you see the really heavy people motoring around in, you will not burn up any calories motoring around in a little scooter. Before there were such things, we didn't have a lot of fat old people. Now we've got all these little scooters and we got lots of fat old people. We got lots of fat young people, but I'm not a big fan of these little motor scooters. So when somebody asked me to sign them a big prescription for a $5,000 motor scooter, I kind of chuckle and say, no way. Unless you've really got a problem, then I'll be happy. But that's not my favorite little toy of motoring around, okay? I want you to use your feet and get up and walk. Medications. I get asked quite frequently, what do I think about this or that pill? In fact, we were just talking about glucosamine. But let me start here with this series of letters that refer to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, otherwise known as NSAIDs. That's your Motrins, your Aleves, the Celebrex. Mobix, Volterans, all of these fall into this non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. So everybody's got one that sits in their stomach well and one that doesn't, and they're all worth a try. Celebrex is around, Viox got taken off the market four or five years ago. There's always another one down the pipe. Glucosamine, nobody quite understands how it works. The principle is that glucosamine and chondroitin constitute some of the raw materials that make up that shiny white surface I showed you at the beginning of the talk. And if you take that, it will help to restore your joint to some degree. I don't know that it restores the joint, but it does make it feel better. I take it, I believe in it. Half the people take it, nothing happens. It's relatively inexpensive and it does seem to help. So if you take it, expect that it'll take a month or so of being on it before you'll see anything of any great results. But I'm personally a fan of it. I won't say that the science is all that supportive. Injections, the two major elements that we inject into people's knees are some form of corticosteroid, otherwise known as steroids, or hyaluronic acid. The other thing is, they're called vesicle supplementations. Those are your Synvisc, Orthovisc, Euflexa, Suparts, there's a half a dozen or more. They're all slippery little jellies that we squirt in the knees, it's slippery up the surface that's lost its slippery capacity. That stuff's just got awful expensive, unfortunately, and it doesn't seem to work in my hands more than about half the time on a good sunny day down here. So I'm not a big fan of that because the expense of it seems ridiculous in proportion to how often it helps. But we can try that. Synvisc used to be three shots. Now they got one super duper shot, all three together in one shot, and we put it in. And there, all these companies are vying for market share because this stuff's so ridiculously expensive, and none of them work better than the others, at least in my experience. So cortisone's been around forever. And when we go back up here, remember I said that's non steroidal anti inflammatories? Well, cortisone's a very potent anti-inflammatory drug. It takes down swelling. It turns off the cells that line your joint that elaborate all of these substances, chemical substances that fire up your nerves and make things hurt. So cortical steroids are kind of a mainstay, been around forever. Often people will say, that shot worked great a year ago. The one you gave me didn't work at all. Well, 
possible, there's three or four different kinds of corticosteroids that we use in injections. But typically, corticosteroids work, sort of work, sort of don't work, don't work. That little cascade is pretty routine. I always say that if steroids worked all the time, there wouldn't be orthopedic surgeons, we'd all be rheumatologists. So for the most part, steroids work for a short period of time, if they work at all, and they're worth a try. Just had a fella came in today, a guy up north said he needed his knee replaced. He'd never had a cortical steroid shot ever. And even though he's bone to bone, I've got reason to be optimistic that the shot will help him. So we try that on everybody. Okay, now the probably last but most important thing that I can advocate that you can do for yourself to stay away from guys like me is some form of exercise.